Hey everybody, it's Monday. I'm Lawrence Presman, the Prez, excited to host the show Puck Time. It's our hockey show over at Wager Talk TV, our YouTube channel. We just crossed 42,000 subscribers, so a real big shout out to all of you guys for helping. You know, we really appreciate it. We put a lot of work into this channel. Everybody, there's so many moving parts, and uh, we are we are going to cross 100,000 in the next 12 months, and. Uh, when we get there, oh boy, are we going to celebrate. Uh, today's show, four games on tap. Uh, Carmine Bianco with us as well as Alex Smith. Uh, let's bring them in and uh, have a chat. Uh, hey, boys. Uh, Alex, before we get into anything, I just want to start by uh, showing you a picture. So I know you can't see it, but our audience can. There it is. There it is. All right. Um, I had a glass of Coca-Cola on Saturday night. Yes, sir. Nice. Um, my first Coke in like a year, and I thought of you and actually took a picture. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you enjoy it? Um, I actually sent it back. It wasn't fizzy enough. I'm like, if I'm going to do this, man, like, because it was out of the tap, right? I'm like, oh, I'm doing yeah, right. this. Yeah, so we come out flat yeah so i sent it back they brought it back to me i drank the whole thing i thought it was you know i find it delicious but it bloats me so it's not something that's i find good to eat when sitting down for dinner because i feel very heavy after it yeah the carbonation that makes it i always remember the uh the old school movie advertisements where they would have it with the popcorn and the dancing bottle of coca-cola that's usually the best uh, thing it goes with kind of a bag of chips or some popcorn on the side yeah, I could see you liking that. Carm likes his Coke with a kale salad. No, oh, no. The last thing, I, I'm glad you're not drinking anymore because we don't want you bloated. The last thing we need is a prez with more air in him. But a uh, bing! Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, no, I, I don't drink pop at all. Um, it's very rare I'm out somewhere where I have, like, a mixed drink that has uh, pop in it. And, and stuff, but, um, and I've thought about buying one of those machines that... Yeah, the soda in, fizzers. Oh, the soda stream, yeah. The soda stream fizzers or whatever, but um, I, I, I pretty much have stopped drinking beer um, because of the, uh, the same reason, the carbonation. I, I drink a lot of cider, believe it or not. Um, yeah, uh, and, and, and Carm, you made like a hundred bottles of Lemoncello. Yes, I'm. Uh, after this show, I'm heading to uh, FedEx to, to ship us uh, a few of them out. I found a way to, to hopefully get some to our Detroit office, uh, along with a few other gifts I'm sending over for the uh, for the staff there as a uh, Christmas thank you uh, for everything they do for us here at uh, Wager Talk and Sports Memo. Uh, he's Carmine Bianco, WagerTalk.com, Alex B. Smith, SportsMemo.com. Uh, boys, let's get into the first game, and then we'll talk about some business. Um, Tampa Bay, minus 180 against the Islanders. And I mean, wow, the Islanders must have plummeted to earth. They must have an entirely injured team to be a plus 160 dog. And, you know, I mean, I get it. Tampa Bay still has the luster of last year, but this team is not playing really well. They did beat San Jose 7-1, but they lost at home to Minnesota. Uh, and this team's lost four out of six. You know, the Islanders had that monster win streak, um, but they lost to Dallas 3-1. Uh, I mean, I think Dallas might. Dallas and Colorado, to me, are probably, you know, with Boston 1-2-3 and three in the league, and we add Washington to that mix. Um, I can't take Tampa Bay at this type of a number here. Uh, this game just reeks of pass for me, Alex. What do you like? I, I look at Tampa Bay here on the puck line, actually. Tampa Bay has given the Islanders fits over the last uh, several years. 11-3 and, and three, the last 14. One, uh, the last six at home. Uh, the Islanders have had a very weird schedule. This is their fifth game in eight days. Uh, they've had to bounce around. They were 
uh, in home for one game, and they're back on the road. It's just been a, a really odd scheduling spot for them where Tampa Bay's been able to be at home over the weekend, uh, have a few more games at home. They won't actually leave the state of Florida until December 21st. So uh, this just seems like it's a good spot here. we got Tampa Bay's offense starting to click again. they got seven goals against uh, San Jose, as you mentioned, in that last win where the Islanders have been alternating wins and losses their last four games. Uh, the only time they scored more than three goals was four against Detroit, where, as we've talked about, everybody can score four goals against Detroit. So uh, I think the Bolts will win this one by margin. Yeah, I mean, Alex, look, you're right. Tampa Bay has dominated the New York Islanders, but they lost the last game 5-2. Uh, they lost two games prior 5-1. Um, I don't know, you know, when you got to move off of trends, but I know for me, um, you know, the New England Patriots were 44-0 and in December at home up until yesterday, and I had the balls to take Kansas City. That was my five-star winner, by the way. Huge thanks to everybody who jumped on board for my five-star NFL play. Got a little hairy at the end there. Uh, I think bad refereeing probably cost uh, New England a chance to tie it up. Um, but, hey, I'm not so interested in trends from three years ago. Uh, but, yeah, I like the thought, and, and I agree with you that the spot definitely does favor Tampa Bay. Um, puck line, I, I'm not, I'm, I can't do that. Uh, if anything, I would play Tampa Bay in regulation. Uh, but I don't have to, so it's a pass. Carmine? Uh, yeah, you know, Tampa's coming around. Um, you know, if, uh, the thing here is in looking at the Islanders and why they're probably this price is they are, um, and after that sort of that big run, they are struggling on the road. Uh, you have to think they've lost five of the last six. Their one win was in Detroit where everyone seems to win. Um, but they struggled to win that game. Uh, although they won 4-1, they didn't put it away until the third period. They were all shot in the game. <laughs> the one thing, the one biggest factor here with the Islanders is, and, and this is with playing on the road, is they don't get the last change. Uh, and against a team like Tampa Bay, uh, when it comes to, to line changes and getting those top two lines out there, the Islanders aren't able to, to, to line match on the go. Um, they're going to have to line match on the go because you can't, um, you know, that last change obviously belongs to Tampa. Um, five or six on the road, they've lost. Uh, you know, going f further back uh, against the Flyers and the Pens, a uh, couple OT wins. Uh, so, you know, um, the, the puck sort of bounced the right way in those games. Or we'd be talking about the fact that they've lost one of their, uh, they lost seven of their last eight games on the road. And, and uh, yeah. you've got Varmolov in net tonight uh, for the Islanders. You've got uh, McElhaney, uh in net for Tampa. Five of the last six, six games. I know we don't want to uh, always focus on trends. Five of the last six games uh, in Tampa have gone to uh, to Tampa and all by multi-goal wins, two plus. Uh, so if you're looking at that um, at that puck line, you're getting plus 140 uh, if you're siding with uh, uh, with the Lightning here. And uh, you know, I don't want to overreact to that seven-one win, but they look pretty good uh, against San Jose uh, in that game. So it's. A uh, couple of factors here, like you guys said, maybe take the puck line regulation time, uh, both viable options here. And uh, if you're looking at the fact that uh, neither one has their um, uh, their number one goalie in net, as far as I'm concerned, you might want to look at the total as well, too, in the over. Uh, boys, $9 Mondays over at Wager Talk and Sports Memo. Every single play offered today, including plays that might be up for the weekend, uh, are only nine dollars that's at both websites wagertalk.com and sports memo uh, so head over and check that out nine dollar mondays uh boys i leave town uh on thursday and uh to the prez haters out there uh happy uh, holidays by the way um you guys should celebrate. I'm not going to be back until December 25th. So the two of you guys are going to be co-hosting, uh, not co-hosting, but sharing some hosting um, activities. Uh, Carm, what's the schedule? I believe that I will do uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and uh, Friday of the following week, because uh, next Sunday, from Sunday to Thursday, I will be taking the wife to Punta Cana, for uh, five days um, so she can 
uh, she can be sports free for five days. Yeah, you have your phone. Um, no, so, uh, so Alex, yep, uh, you're gonna handle Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Well, Monday and Tuesday, definitely for sure. Wednesday, I was going to be up in the air because I have to travel uh, as well. I'll be going home to Chicago, so that day I, I will be uh, won't be available. So I'm not sure what we're doing for that. If there's only three games on that Wednesday. We can. Uh, uh, you might want to uh, maybe on Tuesday just do a look ahead and and cover some. Perfect. Games. Okay. Now Perfect. Um, so Carm, you're going to do it out of my house, and Alex, you're all set up with uh, the software, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, perfect, guys. I'm excited. Uh, I will not be listening. But, viewers, I will be checking comments. So if you want to talk about how much better they are than I am and how I have to go and how I have to fire myself, etc., etc., not a problem. Carm? Yeah, you know, on the uh, a perfect segue when you're talking about comments. Okay, uh, to all of you guys out there that watch this, over the next five days... From today till Friday, I am going to be reading every single comment. I will comment where needed, but I am going to choose one of the uh, one of the comments over the over the five days, the best comment. And I'm going to do if you follow the contest that I, I ran before, I am going to pick one guy, and then I'm going to post the prize wheel on Twitter, and it'll be anywhere from wager bucks to a three day, seven day. Uh, uh, package wherever it lands the person with the best comment is going to win that prize I will get it credited to your wager talk account so comment uh, make them good ones make them bad ones uh, do whatever you want to do but make it a good comment uh, and you got a chance to win something there you go uh, okay boys let's talk about this Washington game I mean they're at home minus 230 uh, they're playing Columbus and Columbus I mean, I would say they're in a free fall, but I mean, really, we're going to say that a lot this year. This Columbus team is just struggling uh, all around. They've lost four games in a row, uh, and they're really, really, Alex, struggling to score. I mean, they put a one against Florida uh, would be the equivalent of a one against Detroit. Uh, they put up two against the Rangers, two against Arizona, zero against the Islanders. Uh, this team is a mess, and Washington is absolutely unstoppable. You know, we spoke about them against Anaheim on the Friday show, and I thought it was a bad spot for Washington, but I wasn't going to get in their way. Um, I mean, you know, we're going to talk about the Boston-Ottawa game right after, and, you know, in the NHL, spots are the key to me. They're more, more important than matchups. Um... Washington is back home from a, uh, a fairly long road trip, if you will. Uh, five, four games on the road. They left on November. The first one was November 30th. We speak all the time about these first games back at home from a long road trip, and this is the position Washington finds themselves in. Um, I, I'm going to use the Ralph Michaels approach where I cannot take Columbus, but... The spot is such that I cannot take Washington either. Uh, regretfully, the Prez has another pass. Alex? Yeah, I completely agree with you. As far as the side, uh, and even maybe the total, uh, full game total goes, I would be passing with this. But I'm going to be looking at the team total over with Washington. Uh, it seems like whenever they win, they score at least three yeah. or four or five uh, goals. And we're getting three and a half at minus $1.15. Uh, this is a Blue Jackets team that's been giving up goals in bunches. So even if they end up losing this game, uh, it'll more than likely end up being a track meet. So I'll at least go over three and a half with the Capitals. It's the only thing I look at playing in this game. Bald man? Uh, yeah, you don't want to hear it. Um, I I'm staying away from this game only because uh, you, you look at that road trip. And I understand that like, th th this was a um, obviously a West Coast trip. Uh, they're coming back feeling good, good, good in themselves. But it's one of those games where they could be surprised at home. Um, they did have a similar West Coast trip where they, they traveled the West Coast of Canada, uh, came back and completely annihilated the Sabres in their first yeah. game back at home, 6-1. to one. Yeah. Uh, It could be the same here. Uh, this Columbus team um, has had their number. Uh, they can play Washington tough. Uh, and it's the only way that the, uh, Columbus has a chance to win. They're not going to outscore Washington. There's not a chance. 
uh, in a shootout, they're going to short uh, score Washington. If they're going to beat them, they're going to beat them 3-2, uh, that type of game. They're not playing well, they're, but they're uh, at the end of the season, this uh, Blue Jackets team is going to be a 10, 11, 12, 13 type of team. Uh, they're not making the playoffs, but they have uh, Corpus Allo in net tonight. Uh, for a losing team, he's got a winning record with a 2.85 goals against average, uh, 9.00 or 0. .900. Uh, save average. Am I saying they're going to win tonight? Uh, no. Um, but it's scary enough that I'm going to stay off the game. Can't lay the number. Can't even lay, yeah. uh, lay, I can't even lay the, the regulation time number here. Yeah. Um, if, if anything, I would lean to the under yeah. six and hope that they play a very tight game and, and it's one of those three, two finals. Remember, everyone, I'm leaving town. Uh, Carmine is hosting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Alex, Monday, Tuesday. No show next Wednesday, Thursday, and then Carm is back Friday. I'm back on December 25th. Um, if I forget to mention, I really hope all of you have just an incredible month of December. So much love and happiness and joy in your life. Uh, to the haters who post negative things, I really hope you guys get a blowy at some point this month because you need it, man. I mean, you need you just need to lie back on your bed, close your eyes, and envision something positive. Um, speaking of something positive, uh, Ottawa got a win. Uh, they beat Edmonton 5-2. Other than that, they've lost uh, six of their last seven, and now they're hosting the Boston Bruins. And, uh, this Boston Bruins team, man, beat, lost to Colorado 4-1, lost to Chicago 4-3, but what a hockey game. Uh, I had the over in that Chicago-Boston game. It was 3-1 with like three minutes to go in the game, uh, and they tied it up, went into overtime. You know, uh, viewers, we get complaints sometimes on the college football betting show with Teddy and Dave Koken that we don't pick, like we're not, we, there's too much passing if you will. A pass in sports betting is still a pick. The concept here is not to give out bad information. And I find myself in this situation again here. My gut is telling me that Ottawa is a live dog tonight. My bank account is telling me don't bet against the Bruins. So Alex, I turn to you and say, Pass again, man. I mean, maybe a lean to the over. Yeah, no, I completely understandable. Like I said, this is not the, the greatest of <coughs> cards. There's a million other, uh, you know, opportunities we'll have throughout the week uh, worth betting on. So if, you, if there's nothing you like, if there's nothing you like, you move on. But uh, I think this is a good spot for Boston and regulation here. Uh, they're going to be pretty pissed yeah. off after <clears> losing two in a row. Like, like you said, that Chicago game where they came back and losing overtime. Uh, then the Colorado spot, I mean, Colorado just... Uh, you know, just absolutely swarmed them. And that was a big spot for both teams. Not really, you know, a lot of people were hyping that up as a possible uh, preview of the Stanley Cup final, uh, which wouldn't shock me one bit. And it was a, mostly a defensive battle. Only Both teams only got 20 shots on goal, but Colorado just happened to get three more in uh, behind Halak. So this is a spot here where definitely can't back Ottawa. It's the beginning of a four-game four road trip for Boston. Uh, I think they're going to come out guns blazing and get the win. So I would take them in regulation. Mr. Bianco, sir. Yes, how you doing? Ah, uh, um, shut up and get on the mic. I'm flexing my pecs. You, know, you can't it, see it, it though. It, it's, it, it's funny. Uh, Ottawa's, uh, I gave this uh, on the Wager Talk site and on Twitter as a free play uh, on the Bruins on the puck line here. Um, uh, and it, it's more of a fading uh, the Senators who are coming back off. Started uh, in Minnesota. Uh, Calgary, Vancouver, Edmonton, and, and they finally ended on the East Coast against Philadelphia. Uh, and you know, and now they're coming home and they're facing a Bruins team that, um, after eight in a row, have lost two games: one to the, obviously the red hot Colorado Avalanche, and uh, and that four three aforementioned game that you talked about to to the yeah. Blackhawks. You know, uh, oddly enough, um, I, I see throughout the year, and I think we've talked about it every once in a while. They used to have the dad's trip, and we talked about how. When the fathers traveled with the players on a short road trip, how the team, uh, you know, they played well in front of their dads. Uh, I'm not saying this is a handicapping tip, but the Chicago Blackhawks uh, went on the road for two games in Boston and New Jersey. 
Um, and uh, on the heels of losing a few games, and it was the mom's trip. The, the mothers, they kept showing them in, the, in one of the boxes with all their Chicago jerseys on, cheering on their players, and they won both of the games. And, of course, they return home, play Arizona, and lose. The moms were not at the game. So it was almost like status quo. We're back home. Uh, our moms aren't watching us anymore. We lost. Um, but that said, uh, it, the Bruins are the team here. Uh, minus 135 on the regulation line if you don't want to lay uh, the juice, which you shouldn't. You should never, you should never lay uh, minus 200 with any team in the NHL. Uh, it just puts you in a hole if you, if you lose it, and you have to win the next two to break even. Um, I would lay the puck and a half, uh, take the do- the plus 130 you're getting yeah. right now um, with the Bruins and, and look for them to, um, to to get right back on their horse and, and start winning games again. So um, I, I, I can't back the Sens here. Um, so it, it's, Bru- it's Bruins or nothing for me. And you get uh, it, uh, Nielsen for is confirmed for the Sens. And it looks like it's going to be Tuka Rask. And listen. Anytime you have a goalie who's 13-2-3 with a 2.15 goals against average and a an, uh, .929 uh, save percentage, um, it's going to take a lot to uh, uh, to beat him. So, Carm, I'm still thinking about the mom's trip component. Alex, uh, are you in your 20s? I'm 30. Yeah, so we have some pretty young listeners, and I want to tell you guys really quick, one of the great things in life about aging, like... You know, I'm 50 years old. Karm is, what, 71? What are you? Two. <laughs> 72. <laughs> I'm 67, which happens to be the same year that the Leafs won their last Stanley Cup. Oh, yeah. shut up, Karm. Uh, <laughs> shut up, Karm. Anyway, one of the great things about aging, Alex, is when you're 30, there's, you know, so many hot women. Like, let's say 20% of all women on the planet are hot. You know, you don't count the 70-year-olds or the 80. So you have a 20% pool of hot women. As you age, it gets larger. So when I was 20, I would look at the mom strip and think, oh, my God, what the hell's going on? Now I look at the mom strip and I'm like, yummy. Just a real perk in aging. It just... Who doesn't want to be in a world with more hot women? And the older you get, the larger the pool of hot women become. Just wanted to make mention of that. Um, Carm, you're not even going there. (laughs) No, I just, yeah, I completely understand where you're coming from. But you have to understand that um, uh, with those women, much like... uh, Okay, you should stop now. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) I'm I'm warning you. We Much have a like, viewer, Kathy. No. She's divine. Stop. Yeah, Kathy's perfectly fine. She's great. But, uh, much and like there's when a you're Tina. Talking, if you're working at the airport, there's a lot of luggage, my friend. There's a lot. Oh, of man. Carl, right. there's a lot of luggage by the time they hit five. Um, One Col- game to go. Co- Colorado versus Calgary. And. Uh, <laughs> Man, like, I think this Colorado team's the best team in hockey. Period. End of story. That's my opinion. Uh, they've won six in a row. Uh, they just beat Boston, Montreal, Toronto, uh, Chicago twice, Edmonton. Uh, now they're at home and they're playing Calgary. And Calgary, since the coaching change, has been on a little bit of a run. They've won four in a row and they're even scoring goals, which is where... I'm looking. Alex, I like over the total of six. Yeah, it's funny you talk about moms. My mom always had a good quote. She always said, everything has a price. And when you look at this Colorado team, they won 4-1 to over Boston, but the price they had to pay for that is they lost Cole McCarr with an injury. He's they lost ridiculous. Cole Grubauer with an injury. Uh, and so now you, you, know, you got the top line guys back after they were been out for a while with, uh, you know, it, it, Branton and getting back in the lineup. Uh, you know, you had Nathan Kadri, questionable. There's a lot of body count, a lot of injuries now with this Colorado team, and they've still been able to find ways to win. But now, like you mentioned, there's a Flames team that's won four in a row, finally getting some consistent offense going, uh, scoring three or more goals in the last three games. Uh, I think this might be a tough spot. And let's keep in mind, Colorado has won every meeting against Calgary since going back to game two of that playoff series. Uh, this is the last time Calgary and Colorado meet in the regular season. I think the Flames is definitely going to be hungry for a win here. I would look at Calgary in this spot. 
Uh, Alex B. Smith, you can find him at sportsmemo.com. The bald man, one of my best friends in the world and genuinely the nicest guy I know. What do you like in this game? Yeah, this is another one of those situations that uh, popped up in, in some of the earlier games in that uh, the Avalanche are coming home off a road trip. Uh, I know that they played on uh, Saturday. was the last game against the Bruins. And they come home, and they're completely on fire, uh, beating everyone, and they're only $1.50 at home. Uh, the Flames plus 130 ever since uh, they got blown out by the Blues at the first game of that four-game road trip. And they, ha they held the players-only meeting, which I talked about um, uh, the very next day. Uh, and I said, uh, you know, to take the Flames in Philadelphia, uh, they would be an improved team. These player-only meetings, I understand it's not a handicapping tool. It's not. But when the, the, the players, when they have this, it's a accountability within the dressing room amongst themselves where they talk about, with no coaches, we need to play better uh, and why they need to play player. And, listen, they beat uh, the Flyers. They've won five of their last six. Uh, they picked up a point in the only loss that they had, which is OT against uh, the Penguins in Pittsburgh. And I understand you can look at it, okay, well, they beat the Sabres twice. They beat the Kings. They beat Ottawa. Who did they beat? Uh, sometimes it's not who you beat. It's getting that momentum going. Uh, and they've got the momentum going. Three straight wins at home. Uh, they're scoring goals, so yeah, you can look at the total. Uh, but they are a live dog tonight, with uh, and uh, Riddick is uh, in net tonight against Grubauer. Uh, plus 130. I, I'm willing to take the dog here, the plus 130, and uh, and see if they can steal one. Because uh, they're due to win one against uh, the Avalanche. Um, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a fair enough price. So I'll take the plus 130 in the Flames tonight. He's Carmine Bianco, wagertalk.com, Alex B. Smith, sportsmembo.com. I finished Jack Ryan. I gave it an 8 out of 10. I thought it was really, really well done. And I've just started the first episode of Goliath with Billy Bob Thornton, and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, boys, outstanding show. Uh, we'll see, I don't know, who tomorrow? Andrew's not going to be around this week. He's in Vegas. Uh, so maybe the two of you tomorrow. We'll talk about it later tonight. Love you both. Listeners, thank you so much. Make sure to keep posting and commenting. We greatly oh, appreciate it. Um, boys, I'm out. Good luck, guys.